Hey, gorgeous. Hello, handsome. It's your girl, Melissa Jackson, with the All in Motion podcast team. And this is the Healing Energy segment here to bring you tips and techniques to live an intentional and phenomenal lifestyle. Today, we have a very special show for you titled Get Into Your Heart with Sally Reed on episode number 66. Let's take a listen. Hello, 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 and welcome. It's your girl, Melissa Jackson with All In Motion Podcast. And we have a very special guest today. My guest today is a quantum alignment coach. And her unique life perspective was initiated by surviving two near-death experiences. And not unlike a radioactive spider bite, they awakened some unique gifts in her. Sally can see them and manipulate energy at the quantum level so that the things change in the physical world. For the 14 years, she has been helping people discover and clear their most stubborn issues simply by shifting their energy. So today, let's welcome our very special guest, Sally Reed. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Hey, Sally. How are you today? I'm great. Awesome. Awesome. So good to hear. So now I would love to know what is a quantum alignment coach? A quantum alignment coach is somebody who helps you align at the very tiniest level, your true self, as opposed to your programming or training. So what my job is to do is to find what your true self or your soul or your dreams or whatever it is that you truly want to be, do, or have. And then I find the thing that is preventing you from going there, being there, doing that. And I'll manipulate it so it allows you to move forward in your true chosen path. Wow, that's exciting. I bet a lot of people are having issues with having alignment with who they really are because childhood trauma or whatever other reasons people have these experiences and they just don't know who they are. You want to tell us more about that? Well, most often the people who come to me come to me because they've tried a lot of different things and nothing seems to be working. So I'm kind of like the healer of last resort. So they'll come to Mm. me and say, yeah, I've tried this, that, and the other therapy for 15 years or, you know, drugs, alcohol, (laughs) doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> the thing is, is if it's not working, remember, that's what Einstein said. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting it to work differently. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I find whatever false truth, and I'm calling them false truth. It's just whatever line of code that you put there or you believe needed to be there in order to achieve this thing that you need. And we'll just manipulate it. So it'd be, you know, you can't create or destroy energy. You just have to change it in a way. So it's a help. And there's a million different reasons why people can't do the thing they want to do. Most of them is some sort of fear. That's the first one, some sort of fear. The next one is some sort of belief, like I'll be disloyal to my family if I grow beyond what my family believes is available to me. I'm not enough to do that try, then I know I'll fail. So there's that one. I'm familiar with that one. (laughs) Yeah. The I'm not enough. And the funny thing about the I'm not enough rule, because these are all like little fake rules. The I'm not enough was put in there in most humans before the age of three, because how many people have met a two-year-old that has been physically subdued and then punished for being a two-year-old? Doing two-year-old things. (laughs) Two-year-olds are bumper cars of of the human race. They just got to crash into everything Mm -hmm. because they don't know any better. You just got to let them be. It's interesting that we're having this conversation today because just this morning, I had this whole experience where I woke up. I like me. I feel like I'm enough today. (laughs) And I was like, I cannot believe it took all these years to wake up and really feel like I'm enough. I'm, I'm sure I've had the moment before, but this morning specifically, I actually took the time to look at myself in the mirror and feel it, which, um, you know, was, was different than, than I'm used to because it's normally work on this and work on that. And there's just that tiniest of trying to catch up to the rest of the people in the world. Well, I wouldn't, 
Okay. The best I, I know whenever somebody is really deep into what they do, they want to be really precise. So what I'm going to say is I transmute it. Mm. Uh, energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can be manipulated and changed in frequency. So tell me about this um, near death experience that you had. Which one? <laughs> the uh, the first one and then the second one. <laughs> the first one was classic. It was your classic NDE. Okay. Where, where you rise above your body and you see your body and then you look down and then you feel the pull of, of the light mm -hmm. and you travel to the light effortlessly and you're in the room with all the relatives and it's all beautiful and perfect and it's so nice. And to a person, everybody always says, when the relative tells you that it's time to go back, because that's mm -hmm. generally what happens. You can't stay here. You have to go back. To a person, they all go, no, I want to stay here, because it really is beautiful. It, it's the cessation of all pain, all worry, all stress. And it's really, really nice. But I went back. And then the second time was much deeper, and it lasted a much longer time. The first one was very short in my experience. Mm -hmm. And I guess because the doctors made me come back to life again. But the second one, it lasted a really long time. I know for a fact on Earth time, it was 45 minutes. But in the other realm, that's a, there is no time. So it seemed like it was very long. And what I noticed in that time frame is just how much information is available on the other side. People mm. talk about it all the time to the other side. And I learned all this stuff. And yeah, it's real. It's true. But I, I recently, and ironically, in a podcast interview, I recently remembered that at the very end of my last near-death experience, when I was given the choice to come back, I, you know, it wasn't a given. I got I got an offer. Maybe you can't refuse here, lady. <laughs> Sign this contract here and you can go back and be with your children. Oh. And so I realized I basically signed a contract with God to do this. I had never really heard of anybody signing a contract with God. But I mm. they literally said, Do you promise? Here, sign. Wow. So in the other world, you know, when you make promises, they're binding. I bet. <laughs> yeah, they are. You don't want to disappoint God. <laughs> well, you can't because <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. At least that's what we're taught when we're, we're kids. You better not disobey God. Yeah, definitely. It's not allowed. It doesn't yeah. happen. So your assignment has been to come here and help people. Literally heal the people and tell the truth. And so I've fulfilled the healing, the people part, but the truth is what I'm supposed to do is speak truth to the, to uh, the people's false truths, I guess, or I'm supposed to be forthright and honest and upright, you know, wherever I talk to, to people, you know, at that level, uh, I'm not okay. certain what telling the truth means. I just... You know, just ask Mother Teresa, when God gives you marching rules, you have to spend your time going, now, what did he mean? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So may, maybe when you are um, healing people, maybe that's their truth, you know, coming out, them getting uh, to be their true selves and allowing them the power to really step into their truth. That's powerful. Yes. The one thing I have noticed recently when I work with people the amount of access I have to their, uh, I want to say their experiences, their timelines, mm -hmm. their, um, it used to just see, you know, bumps and here's the spot, but now um, I don't have to travel. Now I'm like, it's like dream travel. You know how you do dream travel? You're instantly there. So a person mm -hmm. will ask me a question and I'll be able to go immediately to where, their truth got dislodged mm. and kicked to the side. And I can go to that thing and say, well, this is around a belief that this is true. And they'll go, yeah, that's very true. You know, mm -hmm. like, I'll know I nailed it because they go, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I resemble that remark. Yes, I, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. And then, then we'll find the wiggle point on where they can let go of that. And there's, you know, that, that just gets into technique. There's a lot of different techniques that I use. Mm -hmm. 
But when you're ready to give it up, the funny thing is, is it changes like at the speed of light. You know, people have epiphanies, boom. It's like a, a, an epiphany, like, oh, well, that's not true, is it? And then when you get them to try to say yeah. their false truth, they like burst out laughing, trying to speak it. I mean, like, oh, that's yeah. not true. That's so stupid. It's not, it's not true so at all. Silly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it, it gets to a point where they don't even identify with it anymore. They can't even speak it. They don't, they can't even speak it. And if they do mm -hmm. speak it, they laugh and, or, or they'll, you know, like I'll be able to tell how much they've let go because if they're resistant and angry with it, that means there's still pieces in there that need to right. be removed. But if they can say it freely with no fear of saying it or, or if it's so ridiculous and it's mm -hmm. laughable, that means if you have the the power to laugh at something you were once fearful of, that means it no longer has power over you, right? There is right. no power within you. Um, that's why they tell you to laugh at a bully, <laughs> you know? Right. Cause you take their power away. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So, so, um, are you also a psychic? Yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, and I've done my level best to kind of turn that back i mean mm -hmm. i used to um the best way to to describe psychic abilities is like um being able to tune to certain radio stations, mm -hmm. stations. Okay. everything is a vibration and you receive vibrations at different levels and when i was younger i received a lot the kind of vibrations that if you touch something you get information or you walk into a room you get information or you Somebody speaks to you, you can see what's going on in there. Just, it was all TMI. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. wow. So, and then, um, and then it kind of changed. So I was able to access time, like multiple mm -hmm. timelines. Um, we were living in Georgia at the time, and it was really weird to be like traveling through the Civil War. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Really, really weird um, to see yeah. like, driving down the road and and see houses that didn't exist and uh uh union scavenger parties or you know like the the plantation it was it was so it was like you had skipped timelines so like well, you time, were actually there time kept bleeding into one another wow um, and people talk about it, it's like a veil and you can see multiple times and to me, it was, it's usually happens, happened when I was driving. And so I'd be driving along and, oh, be careful. There's somebody. Oh yeah, sure. That's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That's a ghost. That's my ghost friend. Is then, it, is it, then you turn it again. To, hmm? to tell the difference or is it easy? To oh tell yeah. The they're, 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 a ghost and a person? they're definitely transparent, translucent. Okay. It is like okay. a veil. Like you mm -hmm. can see the whole scene, but it's almost like there's a silk curtain in front of it or something. Oh, wow. It kind of looks like that. Uh, like I drove up to my house that we were living in and I saw this gigantic oak tree where I knew for a fact there wasn't even a stump. And you see grizzly. I mean, like I saw a man hang and, and it, was, it was just not good. Wow. Because the lower vibrational stuff sticks around longer mm, than the higher okay. vibrational stuff. Think about this. When you're standing on the street and a boom car is coming, you don't hear the treble. You're only going to hear the bass. Right. It's that same level of penetration. Low vibration has that level of penetration across all realms. Uh, okay. So all, all of the realms or I guess the different times are happening at the same time. Yeah. So when there's a negative vibration, that negative vibration is easier to see and pick up or on. it hangs around longer that's why when people's gifts shall i say are turning on they get mm -hmm. whacked by all kinds of negative stuff because that's the easiest thing to pick up on just right. like it's easier to hear a boom car coming than it is to hear you know the high notes of a something far away the right. low notes like travel like opera yeah Oh, that's so, that's very interesting. So how related to vibration and I guess with everyone walking around with different vibrations, different frequencies, 
and um, lower negative energy. You know, a lot of people or some of us are walking around with negative energy. What would you describe as, I guess, lower energy vibration, maybe depression, anger, that sort of thing? Well, I want to, in the universe, nothing means anything. It's either a low vibration or a high vibration. Okay. In our third dimension, Mm -hmm. in the experience of humans, I mean, like, I want to think, I want you to think about this. In the world of whales, low vibrations are good because they travel a long way in the ocean and you Mm, can hear your whale whale buddies. But in the humans, high vibration is what we like. We're more like birds. Birds love high high vibrations. They don't like the low stuff. What I mean is like when people get caught in a lower vibration, the human is going to say it's a negative thing. People are going to, ooh, I don't like your negative vibes because we automatically think that that's bad and we're pushing it away. So we're going to call it negative. In reality, a low vibration just means moving slower, i.e. depression. Depression means you moving slow, your brain moving Mm. slow, your body moving slow, your life moving slow, Mm -hmm. moving slow, right? Right. When people are, you know, on high vibration, then they're moving fast and they're having fun and they're going forward. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes I feel like I'm just, I'm like my vibration must be really high right now because I'm on, <laughs> and on you it. Can, <laughs> it's true. And you can change your vibration at will. You can. Okay. This um, is the good stuff. I want to hear it. All right. You know how people have motivational speakers? What's mm-hmm. their job to do? What What is a motivational speaker job? To, what's it, What do they do? Motivate. Motivate. No, they you change your vibration. They change your freaking vibration. Mm-hmm. They change okay. your vibration. You know how they do it? They get you to stop looking at what's wrong and start believing that things can be right. Right. They play and loud so music. They talk really loud. <laughs> they want you to think about what is possible for you. And they want you to see and focus on what's right and good. Okay. That's why people go to church. That's why people listen to motivational speakers. That's mm. why they do all that. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need to pay somebody else to do that for you. All mm. you got to do is stop telling yourself how crappy everything is going right now. Mm. It's very simple. I mean, you roll out of bed, you go, oh, it's Monday. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, baby, oh, baby you're crying. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and you just the and, and, and the whole time. And by the time you get up and get out the door, you are on a full on just either numb zombie mode or over it. Mm-hmm. So what's the best way to stop that? The best way to stop that is roll out a bit and change the tune. Just like how many motivational speakers tell you, say, I get to do this. I want to do this. Right. It's mine to do. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just start saying that to yourself? It really makes a difference. We can create our own reality whenever we want to. So absolutely. And half the time when we're looking at negative stuff, we don't know that negative stuff is a fact. If it is a fact, we can say yes, and I can change it. Because what everybody forgets in the world of energy, there are two engines. It's the heart, right? And the heart is a creator. The heart creates what's possible. The heart is the generator of love. Think about holding your baby. You just can't feel that much love, can you? Think about get, you know, winning the race. There's so much joy exploding from you when you won. You did it. And then I want you to think about the mind. That's also a generator. But it is a generator of what could possibly go wrong. That's its job. It's here to keep you alive. It's here to look for danger. And it's here to look out for what's wrong. So it's going to point it out all day long. So which would you rather listen to, the heart or the brain? Mm. So the goal is to listen to the heart. I think so, yeah. It works out better for me that way. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Cause I, I was going to ask what happens if you're telling yourself, you know, it's all going to work out. Everything is great, but yet you're still not feeling it. So in that moment, I guess you're, t- you're telling yourself one thing with your, 
your head, but you're not yet connected to the heart. But if you connect to the heart, then you can also feel what you're saying. There's cheater ways to get connected to your heart too. Cheater uh, ways. Cheater ways. Yeah. These ones are really cool. Uh, my favorite one is, is uh, numbing your brain to sleep. Okay. And that's, that's with counting. Uh, 25 quick checks, quick count to 21 to 25. By the time mm -hmm. you finish 25, your brain has no idea what it, what it was talking about five minutes before. Mm -hmm. That's one. Just, you know, <laughs> the physical way to the heart is very, very useful. You know, drop and give me 20 push-ups is a very, very useful way to forget the crap you yeah, are already thinking true. about. It, it, Connect it works. to the body. Connect Absolutely. to the body. Yeah. And the next cheater way that's super, super helpful is to talk back to your brain. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Who said? <laughs> you talking to me? I don't think so. <laughs> Just talk right back to it. So you become a little crazy. It's okay if you answer your own questions. <laughs> hey, I do it all the time. <laughs> My mother used but to say people who talk to themselves have money in the bank. So I just said, okay, I'm going to talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm the best person to talk to anyway about that. Who else knows? No, that's really cool. So just talk to yourself and tell yourself, hey, look, that's we're not doing that today. Or um, how do you know this is true? Like you know oh, I know true? that she's gonna da 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 da. How do you know? Yeah. You, how do you know? You're is in a brain. Fact? You 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 know, because then we can talk about projecting. Because remember, we create our minds. This is there's been tons of scientific experiences experiments proving that the human mind can create physical reality okay. a million of them i mean look them up i agree with that and so if you are projecting and expecting somebody to show up or be or do something in a certain way and then they do it you made yourself right are you happy? <laughs> no, you're not. There, it, one of my favorite experiments is a, is a psychology experiment about projection, where they split these people in uh, the class in half, and they gave each person a white rat. And they had, you know, they told half the group that they had the smartest rats that learned everything very quickly and their rats were perfect in every way. And they were specially genetically created to be far superior to any rat. And then they told the other half of the group that the second group of rats is mentally retarded and they've never been able to be taught anything and they're terrible and they're stupid and they're dumb and they're, they're worthless mm. wastes of white rat bodies. And then you know, clearly they were just randomly chosen out of a box of rats. <laughs> they were the exact right. same rats. <laughs> like they're just so rats. They, they had these um, these students create tests for the rats and what you know, and you know, be a little scientific, write down what each one did, and and they all you know. Then they had to report at the end. Well, the people who had the smart rats said that their rats had a little difficulty doing the task at first, but then they learned very quickly and they're very exceptional rats and they expected the rats to do well. So the rats all did well. <laughs> then the people who had the stupid rats expected the rats to not do it at all. And so they said, oh, the rats just didn't do a very good job. One or two of them figured it out, but man, they're just not so good. And they were focusing all their attention on the rats doing poorly. And boy, didn't they. Hmm. One or two of them. And that's what humans can do. We do it to our children. We do it to ourselves. We do it to our loved ones. We do it every day. So that's the yeah. next cheater thing you can do. If you don't know it for a fact, don't make it a fact. Mm. Yeah, because I guess very few things are actual truths. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. So it's all about the power of perception, how we perceive it to be and the words that we say about it and how we create it. And it's, I, I love that because I'm always telling people, you know, you create your reality. 100%. So um, that is just, it's so true. Now, is there anything else that you would like to share with us today while we have you here? Anything you want to tell us about quantum healing? Okay. Well, here's the thing about quantum healing. 
It's exactly like singing. Everybody can sing, but not everybody sings well. But if you practice, you get better and better. And what I mean by that is you have the ability to heal yourself if you allow yourself a little bit of grace, a little bit of forgiveness, and a whole lot of trust. Awesome. Awesome. And do you have a way that people can get in touch with you to um, take your courses or um, do you have any workshops or anything coming up? Any, anything big? I'm sure my people would love to connect with you on, in any way that they can. Well, I, I have a gift for your people today. Oh, yay. Uh, we love gifts. It's 15 questions to bump yourself out of a funk, out of the state. And it's just a quick downloadable PDF. And you can ask yourself these 15 questions to help, you know, when you find yourself spinning your wheels mm -hmm. and you can stop and ask your questions, you know, like, what's the best use of my energy right now? That's my favorite question. What's the best use of my energy right now? Mm. And, and, you know, just bring yourself back into now and stop spinning your wheels. But if somebody wants to get in touch with me, the best way is my name, sallyreed.com. And there you can find ways to um, work with me privately, work with me um, through group classes or workshops. And also there's a media kit if you want me to speak to your group. So I am right there at sallyreed.com. Yay. So you would be available to tell us more and have these um, let us know more about what you're doing. I think this is so awesome. I really love everything that you do and, you know, hearing about how we can change our reality just by speaking things differently, thinking things differently. And I really like when you said get into your heart because, you know, sometimes I'll tell my mind, I'll switch my mind, but then my heart will still be where my mind was, <laughs> you know, that I forget wait, you're not, you're not in the right place. Your feelings aren't there. So I really love how you, uh, how you worded that and you brought that to our attention. So I'm extremely grateful for you joining us. And if there's anything else that you want us to know, it's been so wonderful having you. Thank you. And the, ma the main thing I want you to know, whatever you're doing right now, it's not going to last. So if it's bad, it's not going to last. But if it's good, it's not going to last. That's just the way that. things are. Yeah, I love that. I love it. The one thing that we know that's for sure is change. <laughs> change Everybody is forgets always... that. They yeah. forget it. Yeah, change is the one constant. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you, my dear friend, Sally Reed. We appreciate you. We love you. It's been so nice to have you on. Hopefully we can have you on again soon. And thank you everyone for listening to my show today. And you have an amazing day. Thank you for joining me and the All in Motion podcast team. Get into your heart with Sally Reed. Go and download your free gift now. Please like and share if you enjoyed the episode. Visit our website, allinmotionpodcast.com, to subscribe and listen to our other episodes. Remember to follow us on Instagram and your favorite podcast platform. And remember, if nobody else tells you today, I love you and you are amazing.